Welcome back to another episode of the e-learning series on GFSM, the Government Finance Statistics Manual. In this episode, I will talk about government debt. I will introduce the internationally harmonized statistical definition of public sector debt and explain some practical problems when comparing debt data across countries. I will show an approach explained in a visual debt matrix presentation that improves debt comparability. How can we best compare the government debt levels of two countries? How can we ensure that we're not comparing apples and oranges? Although national government debt data may appear to be comparable, we will see that these data are composed of several dimensions and comparability cannot be taken for granted. One long-standing practice is to express gross debt as a percentage of GDP, but this is only a first step towards the comparability of debt data. Obviously, using the same concepts and definitions is another vital starting point. The GFSM methodology lays out an internationally agreed definition for debt as a financial claim that requires the payment of interest or principal by the debtor to the creditor in the future. Six categories of liabilities in the GFSM framework meet this definition and constitute gross debt. Debt securities, loans, special drawing rights, currency and deposits, other accounts payable, and insurance, pension, and standardized guarantee schemes. If both countries report debt data with the same set of instruments, we are one step closer to achieving full comparability. However, in practice, this is not always the case. Some countries, for instance, only publish data on debt securities and loans. Many also report information on accounts payable, similar to unpaid bills, while others do not maintain such records. In such cases, comparing debt between countries can become an exercise of comparing apples with watermelons. The first step thus entails unraveling total gross debt data into various levels of debt instruments. Even though some debt instruments may exist and not be published, matching debt instruments can then still be compared. And debt comparison between countries must also consider a second dimension. Debt can be held by more than one level of government. Beyond the budgetary account, state and local governments sometimes incur debt in their own right, and so do extra budgetary units and social security funds. Again, in practice, countries differ in the data coverage of the various levels of government. Some publish only on the budgetary account, while others publish on the entire general government or even the whole public sector. The IMF has developed a matrix format that enhances transparency with respect to those two dimensions, the coverage of debt instruments and the coverage of levels of government. The matrix brings these two dimensions together. Increasing levels of debt instruments are shown on the x-axis. Increasing levels of government are arranged on the y-axis. The x-axis presents D1, comprised of debt, securities and loans. D2, which adds special drawing rights and currency and deposits to D1. D3, further adds accounts payable. And finally, D4, adds insurance, pension and standardized guarantee schemes. The y-axis shows five different aggregation levels of the public sector. The core is GL1, which comprises just the budgetary central government and is the narrowest concept. GL2 looks at the consolidated central government and includes extra budgetary units and social security funds. GL3 adds local and state government levels to GL2 and yields general government debt. An analyst may get a more complete picture by extending to GL4, the non-financial public sector that includes non-financial corporations. The highest aggregation level is GL5, the total public sector and includes the public financial corporations. However, presently only a few countries publish this information. Let us look at an example. Suppose we have two countries with the following coverage. Country A disseminates data covering all debt instruments, but does not publish data on state and local governments. Country B disseminates general government data, but has no data covering standardized guarantee schemes. To compare like with like, instruments and sectors need to be matched as displayed in the matrix. 
In this particular case, both countries disseminated debt data, at minimum on the level GL2, the Consolidated Central Government. Both countries report debt instruments at the aggregation level D3, all debt instruments except for insurance, pension and standardized guarantee schemes. The debt of these two countries can be compared with the combination of the dimensions GL2 and D3. Although we cannot compare these countries at the wider scope of the internationally recognized definition of debt, the analysis can be made at a highly transparent level. Transparency is aided by the fact that an analyst is fully aware which data are included and which data are not. This debt comparison matrix offers an improvement on available alternatives, comparing inconsistently reported gross debt data or not comparing at all. Comparing debt data is not limited to two countries, but is especially relevant for groups of countries with the same combinations in coverage. Note that this debt comparison matrix does not change the internationally agreed definition of gross debt, which is set at D4. Before we close, please note that two further dimensions require consideration, valuation and consolidation. Debt data are most comparable when the same valuation is used, for example, either market, nominal or face value. Furthermore, debt data are most comparable when fully consolidated according to GFSM guidelines. Consolidation nets out government internal debt relations. Also keep in mind that gross and net debt measures should not be confused. The gross debt measure is most often used for comparison purposes. To summarize, gross public sector debt is clearly defined from a statistical perspective. Unfortunately, not all countries report the full scope of gross debt, either by the coverage of the instruments or all levels of the public sector. In addition, sometimes a different valuation is applied or data is not fully consolidated. The IMF's debt comparison matrix presented in this episode is a flexible and transparent approach to extract a greater potential from available debt data.